share the light He'll give you strife He's taught He's tall, he's mean He's labeling the sheep He's taught Rides a motorbike He'll tell you what it's like He's taught Don't know what he'll say He'll scare the kids away He's taught He's taught So, good morning, good afternoon Episode 13 Actually, week 14 I hope everyone's doing well I know uh, I'm really getting tired of staying home I'm a road warrior, so it's, uh, it's kind of tough on me um, but thanks for joining me. Uh, this is the next best thing to actually getting out there and shaking hands, and uh, which we can't do anymore. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, I hope everyone's well out there. We're going to talk about electrical this week, and my background is datacom. But uh, when it comes to labeling, I swing both ways. And the fact that uh, we do electrical as well. And uh, we, we do it quite well at that. Um, electrical based upon uh, the, the NEC and ANSI and OSHA, um, they're really stringent upon what, uh, what you label out there and the different color codes. And we're going to run through, I've only got a half an hour, so we're going to run through this real briefly. Um, at the end of the segment, I am uh, going to bring in Mr. Dan Cobb. He's going to talk a little bit about uh, lockout tagout. Speaking of uh, uh, Dan Cobb, Jamie Brookover couldn't be with us, uh, with us this week. He's actually in contract negotiations and uh, with Hot Toddy Productions, and so I, I bounced him this week. So in his place, we've got Mr. Dan Cobb. Dan, can you turn on your camera and say hi to everybody? Okay, uh, I got to hit you too. I gotta yeah. Hit. Okay. Well, I know you're a newbie, and and uh, yeah. you know. But anyway, Dan, uh, I, I appreciate you joining us. Dan is also uh, the writer and producer of the uh, BS with Todd song. So, Dan, I, I appreciate your endeavors there. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, Dan, you could turn your camera off now. But thanks for joining us, Dan. We'll bring right. you back a little bit later. Dan is going to be in the background answering all questions for you. Hey, boy, you better turn off your camera. I'll turn it off for you. Um, he's going to be in the background answering any and all questions for you. Uh, so if you do have any questions, uh, please let Dan know. Uh, I did do a PowerPoint presentation. I can't stand PowerPoints, death by, uh, by you know, PowerPoint. Uh, but I've got seven or eight slides I'm going to show you, and I'm just going to go over the basics of uh, some electrical labeling out there. Now, it all, uh, with labeling, it's very important that you have a, a very rugged tape and specifically in electrical because uh, that, that can be a little more hairy being as you've got service entrance, um, you have high heat elements uh, coming into play, you have cold coming into play. Uh, speaking of uh, durable tape, week number 14, uh, this one here in water, this one here in oil. And so um, we're going to see how long these, uh, these go. So anyway, um, 14 weeks now inside water and oil. So again, a very tough label. And we'll talk about the different attributes of labeling and um, the, the kind of environments that these labels uh, need to withstand. So with that being said, I'm gonna share a couple screens with you. The first screen is gonna be the PowerPoint. I'm gonna go over some of the just basic type of electrical, if you will. Um, again, if you have any questions, reach out to Mr. Cobb. Uh, let's do this, all right. And no, I no, I didn't no, I didn't want that. No, 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 I wanted this. Okay. So anyway, some some of the attributes that we have, and most of these pictures I took myself. All right, you've got service entrance, you've got panels, you've got sub panels. Let me get some of this out of the way. You can see on the left, these are actually uh, my panels that I took. I have no idea what some of this means up here. Um, and again, you've got, uh, you got some cabinet panels on the right, which are labeled correctly. You've got uh, both residential and commercial, if you will. You can see on a service entrance down below where it says power supply, again, all your piping, your conduit is, is labeled. 
the whole idea behind this is I highly, highly, highly recommend a laminated tape system. A laminated tape system is going to protect the print. It's going to protect, uh, protect from the elements. It could be grease. It could be water. It could be condensation. It could be humidity. Um, it could be direct sunlight. So UV resistant and every brother tape that we have, except for our heat shrink and, and our TZEN 201, which is our super narrow tape is going to be a laminated tape. So again, uh, scratch resistant, scuff resistant, um, and so a very durable tape. So here's one example here of, of the panels, and this is kind of a, a must do. However, you can see up here, specifically on the residential side, uh, they either use a Sharpie, um, they'll use masking tape. If you're a contractor, why would you do this? You know, why would you leave an installation with something like this? Um, I tell you what, I personally would not hire that contractor to, to come back and do any work. Uh, I want to make it to where if I go up to any type of, of panel, uh, any type of sub panel, any type of uh, disconnects, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, uh, I want to be able to see and identify all, all the different devices. And um, so anyway, on to the next one. So disconnects and outlets. So the one you see on the left, um, I forget where I was. I think I was in John Wayne Airport. Uh, obviously, that is not a brother tape. You can see it's not laminated. You can also see to where it's coming off. Now, one of the things you have to consider, if you look at this particular faceplate where that label's coming off, there are chemical polymers inside these plastic or PVC faceplates which will emit right, some, some of the, the attributes that they're made of. So you want to have a tape that is going to withstand any type of chemical leakage right, due to uh, the, the plastic involved here. I highly recommend using our extra strength tape in environments like this for any type of plastic outlets or, or disconnects. Uh, you can see here in the middle, I've got the stainless steel, uh, which is nicely labeled. Um, you're not going to have uh, the same type of adhesion problem uh, as you would, let's say, on a plastic faceplate. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, again, the tape on the left is not a brother tape. Uh, chances are, even if it was our standard adhesive tape, it's not going to come off. But to be safe, use the extra strength tape, uh, if you will, please. It's actually got a softer adhesive. Uh, and then the, the lamination is going to help protect from some of those uh, chemical polymers in there. You see a disconnect on the right. Again, this is a commercial application that somebody's taking a Sharpie to. Now, is it identifiable? Sure, 400 volt DC line one. Uh, this is done by a professional contractor. I don't know who did it, but chances are if I paid for an installation with some type of disconnect like this, I probably wouldn't hire them back. All it takes is just a simple label. You can do it on a handheld machine. You can do it on a desktop machine. You can pre-print these. You know, hell, if you wanted to, you even use sticker books. All right, something like that looks a hell of a lot better than any type of uh, Sharpie. All right, so uh, again, your disconnects, your outlets, uh, conduit and piping, very, very, very important. Um, you can see on the left, uh, this is, I believe this is, um, I don't know where I took this one. I know it's a commercial, uh, but you can see uh, that it's clearly identified what is running through that conduit system. In the middle picture, another great example of the way that conduits and piping should be labeled. On the right-hand side, uh, this is the recommendations, recommendations from uh, ANSI, OSHA, and NEC, specifically NEC as far as uh, your minimum font sizes depending upon your viewing distance. So that is very important. It, it's not super enforced, but again, you know, I, I'm six foot six, so I'm going to stand a little higher than most people, which means that stuff up above is going to be easier to read for me than, let's say, uh, Jamie Brookover. And so, again, there's just a guideline right there that will help you uh, to identify the minimum font size depending upon your uh, distance away, your, your viewing distance. Junction boxes. Oh, boy. 
look at this, same thing. I, I do believe the one on the left was at an airport I took. You know, it's, it's marked with a Sharpie. Chances are, you know, it's a permanent Sharpie, uh, which is great. But again, you know, somebody paid for this installation. Put a label on there. The one on the right, <laughs> uh, again, you know, I, I obvi obviously Gateway 2D. So I was at an airport here. I think this was at, uh, I'm not sure, but, you know, come on. Label the damn thing. All right. And if you want a permanent label, a permanent label, you know, the, the brother labels, if you want, they're going to peel off. They're not going to just fall off like we saw on the previous outlet. You're going to have to peel them off. If you're calling for a permanent identifier, it's called a phenolic label. So uh, I think I mentioned this before within the next couple of weeks, brother will have the phenolic labels available for sale through uh, your local distribution partner. And again, in a case like this, I probably would have put bare minimum a label on this. Um, but if anything else, if, if it was calling for permanent, um, I guess Sharpie's permanent, it's supposed to be, but it looks like hell and somebody paid for this. So again, that's another area that needs to be labeled as well. One of the areas where um, I discovered actually, um, and where was I? I was up in Sioux City or Sioux Center, Iowa. And I was taken to, um, I think it was Pioneer. Anyway, they, they make mining. And um, somebody asked if we did terminal block labeling. Well, I don't know, right? Uh, we do. And we're actually doing it out of our PTE 550W. So there are specialized ways that you can label terminal blocks. Uh, it, typically, you have to buy a specific manufacturer machine. It's a very expensive machine. But on simple block configurations like you see here, those are brother labels. Uh, the picture on the right, you can see where not only have we labeled the terminal blocks, but we're, again, we're also labeling the contact wires coming in to that particular um, custom box, if you will. On to the next one. It's very important, just like in Datacom, all right, to have documentation. So you can see an example on the right to where, you know, that documentation is there for anybody to view. So let's say that you have uh, somebody that's not used to the environment coming into this environment, everything is right there for them. On the right-hand side, uh, colors. Colors are very important in electrical, and there are different colors, meaning different things. So you can see you got the red, the orange, the yellow, the greens, the blues, the blacks, the whites, uh, and different combinations. Those are very, very important right, to uh, electrical, and they each mean a different thing. Uh, so documentation is very important. Please remember that. Let me see. I think that is it. So let me stop sharing my screen. I'm going to go back to me. So a, a lot of these things that you can do, uh, you can do with a simple handheld, which here's our PTE uh, 110. It's just a, a tool bag printer, if you will. The next one you move up to is the PTE 300. You're limited to three quarter inch. Most of the work that you saw in those pictures was done with the PTE 550, which is our top of the line Wi-Fi enabled machine that you can dump a database into. So if you have a database ahead of time, dump it in the machine and work off the database instead of typing everything in uh, manually. Um, I'm going to share my phone. Obviously, we, we do a lot of the specialty stickers that, that you just saw. The warning stickers, the danger stickers, the barcoding. Barcoding, again, is very, very important, I think. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot more contractors going out and putting uh, barcode and asset management on electrical because you, you can essentially read barcodes with, uh, excuse me, barcodes with your phone these days. You, you don't need the, the specialized ones. Well, in certain cases, you need the specialized readers. But a lot of the stuff you can do can be done mobile uh, off your uh, phone or your smart device, iOS or Android. So again, Brother has a capability of, of printing a lot of what you saw as far as the, the pipe labels and the warning labels. Some of the ways that we do it and the easiest way, and I'm gonna share my phone right here in a second, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about, but some of the, and, and the, the app that I'm gonna show you, 
All right, is going to be specific for the PTE 550 uh, and the desktop models. But as you can see, when you bring up the app, if I go down to, let's say, the danger signs, and I bring up the caution signs, there are a ton of electrical already made templates in here. But now you can edit these templates as well. So if I want to, let's say, bring that up, all right, and right now it says caution, but if I want to edit this information, BS with Todd. All right, you can do that on the phone. So you can edit this, oops, you can edit this information as you go. So as you can see, we've got uh, the caution signs, we've got the high voltage signs, there are a ton of different things that you can do on here. Testing and inspection, and inspection. all right, again, this goes for any platform that you're using out there. It could be electrical, it could be um, a low voltage, all right? Uh, we also do the PV labels, all right? PV photovoltaic, say that 10 times fast. So we also have embedded photovoltaic or PV labels on here. Um, the electric vehicle, I, I really don't know. I, I guess if you drive a Tesla or, uh, but anyway, it's on there. The other thing that's really cool about this particular app is uh, you saw before where you, you people were writing in Sharpie, all right? Um, you have the ability with this, and I'll show you, to go in and you can do circuit breakers right here. And you can print the circuit breakers. Now, obviously, uh, the top one, we've got some uh, residential, but we also have some commercial. And essentially what you do is you just type in whatever you want to edit. Blah, 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 blah. Go to the next one. Yada, yada, yada. Go to the next one. Blah, 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 blah. You hit done and you hit print. So you can print um, – Label schedules right from your phone here. There are a couple of different types of circuit breakers on here. As you can see, I've got all of these, and all of these are or can be edited. So if you're doing some type of panel or sub-panel, what a great way of doing this. Here's our Proteus. So again, it just makes it really, really nice and easy. And what happens is as you go through here and you're editing this information, BS with Todd. You can either type it in or you can use the microphone. Hit print and it pops right out of the machine for you. Um, so again, that is our mobile cable label tool. You can also do uh, heat shrink, uh, the cable wraps, uh, all sorts of things. So that will work with a PTE 550. It'll also work with the PTE 800 and some of our desktop units. So with that being said, we got about 10 minutes or so. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to turn the table over to Mr. Dan Cobb. Dan is going to talk about lockout tagout. And uh, again, with electrical and the liability that goes along with it, a lockout tagout is an essential part of this whole electrical uh, labeling. So, uh, Dan, with that being said, um, it's all yours, my friend. Take it away. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for having me today. No, what Todd, uh, what Todd was saying is, is absolutely um, critical. It's, 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 you, you, you couldn't be more on point uh, with, with uh, everything that he showed today in uh, the presentation. A lot of you, what you saw was uh, a lot of handwritten labels and things like that. Um, lockout tagout is in place and lockout tagout's huge. It's massive. I think that it's one of the top 10, if not top five most um, uh, violated OSHA regulations or whatever. You always, always, always see lockout tagout because people, they just don't do smart things sometimes. So, um, but one of the, one of the, one of our solutions for the lockout tagout is, uh, is, is basically a labeling solution and it makes it a lot cleaner. It makes it look a lot nicer. What you typically see now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share 
my, uh, I'm going to share my other screen so you can kind of see uh, what we have going on over here. Now, if you take a look, I've got my label printers here, but I've got, here's my lockout tag, right? Now my lockout tag, this is what you see when you walk through a company. I don't know how many times I've walked through a company and I've seen uh, this kind of tag being put on something. And it's quite obvious that this guy here wasn't hired for his penmanship because it's, it's not good. I have no idea whose tag that is. Problem is later on down the road, the ink gets smudged and, and worn off. And now you really can't tell um, who's locked this out, what the date is or anything about it. And that's a massive, massive problem that people run into all the time. And if, if you're walking through your facility or you're walking through a customer's facility, just take a look at the lockout tags once they're, they're horrible. Now there's a couple solutions for this. One of the solutions is to uh, go on, you can go online and you can buy these tags and you can get somebody's photo put in there and you can get all kinds of information on there. But the problem is that once you buy it, it ships to you. Well, you got to, you have to buy 25 at a time or you have to buy a meet their order minimums. And by the time you actually get it a couple weeks later, who knows if that person's still employed with the company or not. So you have to get another one. Another thing, you, another thing that you could do too, is you can print these things. I saw somebody, this was really cool. They printed the tag out and on a piece of paper and then they laminated it and they put a grommet on the inside of it and it was a really cool tag the problem is it's massively labor intensive so what i've done is i've put together like uh, uh well i'll show you exactly what i did i'm going to share my screen and i'm going to show a little video that i created for this specific um application how easy it is to use our solution by using either this machine which is a pte 800w with a little lockout tag here um, or you can use the ptp 900 series to print uh, these labels and we'll just simply apply them directly too but let's let's share this video so you can kind of see um, what we're doing here and how simple it actually is to do that. So I'm going to share this screen here. It looks like you got, y'all can see that. And I'm going to just go ahead and play. This is how simple it is, right? So this is the Brother iPrint Label app. What Todd was showing before was the, the, the cable label tool, the mobile cable label tool. This one here is the um, iPrint Label mobile app. This is the one that Todd was showing earlier, and this is this one here. What I did in this one, I'm just going to hit play, and you'll see as, oh, that's my old, that's my old one that I had. So I'm going to create a brand new label here. And what I did was I just made it 2.7 inches because the lockout tag itself is right around 2.7 inches. So I set up the, I set it up to exactly what size I want the label. And now all I did was select image. I take a photo with my camera, turn it around. So of course I can get a great selfie. That's a good looking selfie, but it needs to be cropped out because I got a lamp there. So I crop it out a little bit using the just right there in that mobile app. And you can still see the lamp, but that's that's fine. You primarily want to see my face. Um, and then I just type in my contact information. I type in the information that I want. You can go ahead and type in uh, the person's name. You can type in the expected completion date. You can type anything you want. It's absolutely free form and you can add as many text boxes that you want to this as well. That's the beauty of the iPrint label mobile app. So here it came out a little large. So all you have to do is go into the font and make your adjustments. However you want to make it, you can align it left, you can align it right, you can align it in the center, you can go top, you can go bottom, you can change the font type. There's so many different things that you can do as you're doing that. When I was done, of course, I hit print. And that's, that's my label. So literally within minutes, you can create a personalized lockout tag and apply it to your locks, giving you a nice professional looking one. Now here is a very nice feature too, because what I can do is I saved it as Cobb lockout tag out. Now all I have to do if I want to create another one is delete my picture, change the name and the phone number, and it's all done. So that's how simple it is. So what I want to do now is I'm going to stop sharing this screen, go right back to this and kind of show you how simple it is. Once you have that design, then just go ahead and hit that print button. I'll print here from my 800 so long as I'm connected. And I believe that that sound is confirming that I am connected. We'll just get rid of this lockout tag because we don't need that anymore. So I have my label and I have my lockout tag. We just go simply peel that label off of here throw it right on my lockout tag 
and I've got a nice personalized lockout tag. It's that simple. Take the picture, add the, add, add the information that you want to add to it, hit print, it prints that label, you apply it, you got a nice personalized lockout tag. Another thing that you can do with this too, on the back, I created a label here. This is a, this is a label here. If your employees are having a very hard time, if they're putting their locks on goofy things or they're just not doing it right, you can link a QR code directly to it, showing them the procedure for the lockout tag out. This just, you could show these people and that, that's a training opportunity for all your people. Anything else that you want to label, you can put on the back of this guy, but it gives you a nice clean, I might not know who Daniel Cobb is when I'm looking at this tag, but I know who that guy is and I can ask him to remove his tag so that I can actually work in the equipment. So this is an awesome solution for this. And as Todd was showing you, it's chemical UV abrasion resistant. Now, let's say there is turnover. Something happens to this guy. He's no longer working for the company. Very simple. As Todd said, these are removable labels. Just go ahead and peel it off. Get rid of that. Now I got my fresh tag and go ahead and put another label on that. It's as simple as that. Really simple, really affordable, awesome solution for your lockout tag out compared to everything else that's out there. You don't want to, here, let's uh, you don't want to see this on your floor anymore, right? You want to see, well, what I showed you earlier on there. So, Todd, it looks like you're turning your camera on, so my 10 minutes of fame is up. Is that, uh, is that correct? Dan, you've had, you've had double your, your five minutes or 10 minutes of, of uh, fame. So, double. hey, listen, I want to I comment uh, the picture to the left of the PTE 800. I noticed earlier that there was a picture of your wife and, and – uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, Dan, Dan. Well, Dan, Everybody, I appreciate oh, What's that? Everybody should have a picture of Todd on their desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, obviously, Dan's been drinking uh, already. Um, so anyway, Dan, I want to appreciate you going through that process. Um, we get a lot of inquiries for the lockout tag out. People ask us specifically if we sell the lockout tag outs. We don't. Just keep in mind you have to uh, purchase those from uh, your local uh, distribution partner and then utilize um, what Dan was showing you for those lockout tag outs. So with that being said, it's 1027. I mean, a half an hour flies. I appreciate everybody uh, sticking around this week. Uh, next week we have um, – some, uh, what do we got? A warehouse manufacturing applications. You know what? Out of the kindness of my heart, I may even bring Mr. Dan Cobb back here to, uh, to help me with that. Dan um, specifically uh, focuses on warehouse and manufacturing applications. You're going to see a lot of, of uh, barcoding and QR coding which I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of. So I'm sure Dan will um, show you that process as well as some of the applications uh, for warehouse and manufacturing as well. So uh, stay tuned um, and come back next week, please. After that, we're going to go bi-weekly. And, um, you know, things are – they're opening, they're closing, they're opening, closing. Uh, but I think we're going to go bi-weekly. We have been approved for – uh, LinkedIn Live. So we're going to start monkeying around with the LinkedIn Live a little bit to where you just click on a link and boom, you're right here instead of that registration process. But stay tuned for that as well. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the uh, brother team, uh, Amber, if you will. All right. We've got Amber helping us this week. Amber, I appreciate uh, all your efforts back there. Uh, we got uh, myself uh, out here in Carlsbad, California, Mr. Jamie Brookover. Maybe, maybe he'll be back on on the air. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. He's out in Virginia Beach. Um, obviously, you know Dan Cobb now. Uh, Mr. Bruce Page, my uh, my counterpart uh, out on the East Coast. Mr. Rob Dawkins, uh, who does focus on manufacturing, and then our glorious leader, Mr. Craig Robinson, out of Bradenton, Florida. Um, we do have a poll coming up here, so please stick around. These polls are very, very important to us. They let me know and let us know how we're doing. Uh, if you have any suggestions as far as topics, uh, let us know. We're, we're here to accommodate anything labeling, or if you need uh, some bad advice, uh, I'm always here for you. So please take a minute to, uh, to do the poll. With that being said, it is 1029 right now. Um, 
Thanks again. Have a great week. It's Thursday. Uh, have a fantastic week. Stay healthy out there. Um, and that's it. Thank you again. Take care.